In the past 24 hours, we've heard Secretary of State Hillary Clinton in Mexico saying America has to confront its appetite for drugs. Some say the best way to do that is to legalize marijuana. Well, today at a virtual town meeting, President Obama was bombarded with questions on the topic. Take a listen to what he had to say. I have to say that there, there was one question that was voted on that, that ranked fairly high. Uh, and that was whether legalizing marijuana would improve uh, the economy and job creation. And uh, uh, I don't know what this says about the online audience, but, <laughs> but I, I just want, uh, I don't want people to think that uh, this was a fairly popular question. We want to make sure that it was answered. Uh, the answer is no, I don't think that is a good strategy to grow our economy. The president sidestepped the question a bit there, but the fact remains that America's drug habit shows no signs of slowing down. Tom Foreman is here with some numbers on that, which actually may surprise you, Tom. Hi, Campbell. You know, marijuana is the United States' illegal drug of choice, according to a study by the Department of Health and Human Services, which found 14 million Americans saying they used it in the past month, and the users start quite young. The Drug Enforcement Administration says about 17% of 8th graders have tried it, almost half of high school seniors. The percentage of people using pot is generally steady, but the potency of the marijuana itself is up. The DEA says pot grown in the 1970s, for example, was less than half as strong as what people smoke today. Better growing technology has also made the cost of getting high cheaper. And that is a key problem when people start talking about legalizing marijuana. The Rand Corporation, which has studied this a good bit, says no one really knows how much it would cost to legally produce marijuana, how much would be grown, and how much it could be sold for. Presumably, like alcohol, you could not sell it to minors or drive it or drive while smoking it. But how would we pay for enforcement, Campbell? That's one of the other questions. Well, I know a lot of proponents, Tom, of legalization say taxes. Tax the marijuana that's sold. What's the counter to that? Well, you know, it could be taxed, Campbell, but Rand points out you could be talking about a big job here, policing some additional 14 million or more users of a regulated substance, even if it's legal. And that could take a lot of taxes. And if the taxes on marijuana are made too high to pay for all of this, once again, illegal pot could become popular because it could be cheaper. And there is this, the active drug in marijuana, the part that makes you high, is called tetrahydrocannabinol, or THC, and it varies from plant to plant. If the government wants to approve legal use, almost certainly there would have to be a way to determine just how powerful any pack was. Those are just some of the practical complications on top of the health and moral debates about whether this drug should be legal. Campbell. And there's plenty to talk about on that front as well. Tom Foreman for us tonight. Tom, thanks. So as I said, lots of questions about how we might legalize marijuana. But the biggest question obviously remains here, should we do it at all? And we've got two guests tonight on opposite ends of the spectrum here. Joining me now, Representative Ron Paul, who of course ran for president last year, and former Oklahoma Republican Congressman Ernest Istook, who's now with the Conservative Heritage Foundation, a longtime supporter. He has been uh, of the war on drugs. Uh, gentlemen, welcome to you both. Congressman Paul, let me start with you on this. You saw the president earlier. He doesn't seem uh, particularly inclined to legalize marijuana, but for years you have been advocating that the federal government do just that. Uh, make your case. Well, I think the war on drugs in general is just a total disaster. We spend uh, 40 billion dollars a year and all it does is it enhances the drug dealers. I mean, prohibition for alcohol was a disaster and now we've done the same thing over and over again. You're only talking about going back to 1937. You know, prior to 1937, the federal government wasn't involved. That was when the first tax was placed on it. And uh, I, I just think that uh, the states that legalize it, if, if, if any conservative ever considered states' rights, they ought to under these conditions because uh, these states legalize it. I'm a physician and, uh, and I can vouch for the fact that some very sick people are benefit from marijuana. Sick people that have AIDS and cancer can use marijuana and benefit by it. And then compassionate conservatives come along and they arrest them under federal law. They overrule state law and they put sick people in prison for this. It makes no sense. And I don't know why well, we should be such strong supporters of Roosevelt's position to go ahead and tax uh, and then eventually lead to illegal, Ill, making it illegal. It, uh, uh, yeah. it doesn't make a whole Ron, lot of sense. I believe in a free society right. and making freedom okay, of choice. All right, let, let me get, let Let's me let turns. Congressman Nistick go ahead. 
Sure. Well, you know, this is no time to surrender. In the last eight years, our, infor our F efforts to enforce and educate people have brought down the teenage use of marijuana by 25 percent. That's a significant reduction. Now, that hasn't been mentioned before, but it should be. When you're talking about so-called mar medical marijuana, the substance THC is actually already available in prescription form. It's a prescription drug called Marinol. Uh, it's used to treat the very things. There is no medication that is used by smoking. In fact, marijuana smoke has four times the tar of tobacco smoke. It has some 400 harmful substances in it. So, you know, don't tell me you need marijuana for medical purposes. And don't tell me that the cost is measured by only the cost of drug enforcement. Look at the broken homes. Look at the lost jobs. Uh, look at the, the consequences of drug legalization generally. Uh, now, Ron has not mentioned, but he said before, he doesn't just want to legalize marijuana. He wants to legalize drugs, period, which makes it all the more possible for marijuana to be a gay gateway drug to harder drugs like cocaine, uh, opium, heroin, and so forth. All right. I'm going to let you con respond to that, Congressman Paul, but I, but I want to, with both of you, just bring the question back to, to the issue of violence on the border because it's uh, where our focus is right now, given what's happening in Mexico. And Congressman Paul, you're from Texas. You're right there on the Mexican border uh, in your district. If marijuana was were to be legalized, what would change? Well, well, the first thing is, is I, but I don't think just legalizing marijuana would do the trick. I think we have to have a different attitude. I think uh, Ernie just doesn't have a whole lot of respect for the Constitution because prior to 1937, uh, oh, Ron, none of the Supreme these, Court's no, wait, ruled please. on this but, issue but again, already, guys, and your side Congressman, lost. Congressman, if you could just go back to the question I asked, which was yeah. about about the violence on the border, given where you live. Yes, I, what, what, what I really, I, mean, I really think it's for how life would change. I think the uh, the border wars going on right now is related to drugs just as the wars went on in Chicago and other cities when Al Capone uh, controlled everything so you want the killings there were a lot of killings back with prohibition I mean if people want to really you know stop some violence and bad drugs and and uh, stop cigarettes and stop alcohol but we don't it's do not that just drugs but it's not what just we do is we, we combined in this yes, problem it, it is it's, but the but no, the no, whole run run I, I used to the, handle the funding for the custom service the same people yes. that run the drugs and the guns are also running the illegal immigrants. They're smugglers, pure and simple. And all of these things about border enforcement and enforcement against illegal immigrants. And, and did, do you have and any? Did you have any of that? Drugs all go together. Did you have any of that before the war on drugs? No. How, sure, do, how do you think the sure Taliban? How do you think the that? Taliban a exists? Ron, because let's not illegal surrender. Illegal. Let's not surrender and subject. Do we need new well, intoxicants you, in our society? Well, why do you uh, surrender to the con don't want to obey the Constitution? If you want regulations, the Supreme if you Court want regulations, years right, ago, why, why don't the, you? The look. federal law supersedes any state law on marijuana. Said yeah, the well, that is the case, right. but that, that's it not the way the Constitution. Decision. Now, you know, I, I just don't think there's any benefit to just trying to talk over somebody. If somebody wants to ask me a question, okay. I'll answer it. But I'm not going to try to fuss and out, out shout somebody. Uh, Ron, neither one of us tr hopefully should do that. No, no, but. no, no. Let me just because I want to get your take on this one, one thing, Congressman Istook. You, you, you sure. heard Tom Foreman a moment ago. Um, right. Uh, uh, he, he sort of addressed this, uh, and, and we have a separate issue here. The Bush administration, you know, basically they had a zero tolerance policy on marijuana, uh, including medical marijuana. Um, they did raids, they did prosecutions. But the Obama administration has recently announced they're not going to do that, not follow that same po policy. Uh, where do you stand on this? Do you think that's a mistake? The, that, 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 it's, a hu it's a huge mistake because you're sending a mixed message. If you say, uh, if Barack Obama wants to have it both ways, and he's not the only politician that does this, I respect Ron Paul's attitude that he clearly says he wants to legalize these drugs. At least he's giving a clear message. Barack Obama, on the one hand, says don't legalize it, but on the other hand, I'm not going to enforce the law. The Supreme Court ruled, uh, it was in the right decision four or five years ago, that state medical marijuana laws are subject to the federal law that says you cannot have uh, medical marijuana. So we've had a clear ruling, but now the whole waters are being okay. muddied. It's the mixed messages that causes problems in trying to enforce the drug laws and lead to the violations that we're seeing. All right, um, gentlemen, I, I wish we had more time. No, I know there's so much to that's... talk about on this front. Um, I, I really pre appreciate both of you coming on. Uh, Congressman Paul, Congressman Nistook, thank you for your Thanks. time tonight.